Friday, July 8th, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the architect of Abenomics, <laughs> the man himself, uh, former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, has been shot in Japan uh, during a political speech or rally. And we're going to look at that today. Why is that significant? Well, because Abenomics is uh, very important <laughs> in relationship to everything that's going on in the financial markets, not only in Japan, but around the world. So before I start and look at what's happened in Japan, I just wanted to say that we do not condone violence. The only reason we're looking at this story is because it's significant. So it's interesting because let's start with this book again, which I covered yesterday. And uh, I was talking, of course, about the symptoms of a currency collapse of hyperinflation. And one of them is political mayhem, political instability. And you had a lot of assassinations uh, during the period uh, after World War I up until the culmination of the crack-up boom in Germany in 1923. You had people like the foreign minister, Walter Rathenau, uh, who was assassinated. And you had a finance minister, Matthias Erzberger, who was also assassinated. So, yeah, there's a lot of un uh, unhappiness, a lot of uh, instability politically. Yes, we're seeing that here in the UK, everywhere else around the West. But we hadn't seen uh, an, an a, a attempted assassination. I I'm not sure uh, Prime Minister or former Prime Minister Abe, uh, I'm not sure of his condition, but it doesn't look good. So what we're going to look at today is Abenomics, and I've covered that uh, subject uh, on this channel. I'm going to put a link to a video I did, and it was back in uh, February 14th, 2018, so over four years ago. And the, the video is entitled Gold, the Japanese Yen, and Abenomics, and I, I explain what, what it is, the policy whereby Japan really prints loads of money, which they're still doing through the Bank of Japan, through QE, where the government spends massive uh, amounts of money as well, fiscally, fiscal spending. And, and that's continuing. I, I've read about Shinzo Abe. Uh, he stepped down in 2020 because of illness, but he's still very influential, as we're going to see from an article here that we're going to go through this morning about what's happened overnight. And uh, one of the main uh, beneficiaries of Abenomics, I would say, is the U.S. dollar because it keeps the yen very weak and it keeps the dollar very strong. And uh, it helps also keep U.S. interest rates, treasury uh, yields low. So is this going to change anything? Uh, I don't know, but it seems a little bit symbolic, I would say, that uh, the guy who uh, since really, I think he he was elected in December 2012. He was prime minister also prior to that, but he had to resign again because of health conditions. So he's very influential. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, and uh, the dollar has benefited from, from this policy. <laughs> the yen hasn't, of course. And I think it's starting to show there's a lot of unhappiness probably in Japan with the weakness of the yen. We, we've seen the yen go, uh, you know, down like a... <laughs> like a depth charge, so to speak. And we've seen the price of gold as well go to all-time highs of around 250,000 yen. So I don't think things are great in Japan economically, and it's starting to show, I would say. But uh, I have a lot of other uh, videos about Japan, and, and, and I did a video with uh, a Japanese uh, analyst who's based out of Tokyo from Rio Vision Finance, Back in, back in April, April 1st, we spoke about Bank of Japan-like debt monetization coming our way. I'm going to put that up in the cards as well. You can uh, listen to that video. And uh, if you go in my YouTube channel and you search 
uh, content and type Japan. Uh, there's about 22 videos about Japan. So um, another inter interesting thing about Shinzo Abe is his family is very influential, like his ancestors. For example, it says his maternal grandfather, uh, Nobuzuki Kishi, was a de facto economic king of occupied China and Manchukuo. Manchu yeah, Manchukuo, a Japanese puppet state in northern China in the lead up to World War II. So this guy is like up there. Anyway, so here's the story in the FT. Japan's former prime minister Shinzo Abe shot on campaign trail, country's longest serving premier unconscious and in cardiac arrest after assault in Nara. That's in Western Japan. So let's quickly go through this article. Uh, it says Shinzo Abe, Japan's longest serving uh, former prime minister, has been shot during a campaign speech in the western city of Nara in the most significant act of political violence to rock the country in half a century. So this is unusual. Abe collapsed at around at about 11.30 a.m. and was taken to hospital by helicopter after two shots hit his neck and left collarbone. According to the local fire department, he was unconscious and in cardiac arrest. The shooting of one of Japan's most influential uh, modern leaders will shock a society that has suffered little political violence for decades and where guns are owned by only a handful of people. This heinous act of brutality that is utterly unforgivable, said Fumio Kishida. He's the current prime minister of Japan. Uh, Abe's condition was grave, Kishida said. They arrested a 41-year-old. Um, uh, let's keep going here. So after st stepping down as prime minister two years ago, Abe has remained an influential member of parliament as head of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party's largest faction. So he's still very influential. And, and of course, he's the guy who was really helping the dollar, I would say. And it's interesting because Ram Emanuel, the guy who said never let a crisis go to waste, uh, he was an Obama, I guess, uh, cabinet member, and now he's ambassador to Japan. He said he was shocked, and he said, Abe-san has been an outstanding leader of Japan, unwavering ally of the United States. Yeah, unwavering ally of the dollar, I would say. Um, yeah, launched in 2012, the stimulus program known as Abenomics aimed to lift the Japanese out of decades of deflation. And we're going to go uh, through the markets now. And uh, yes, I, I think it's a significant event, symbolic event, <laughs> a little bit like what happened a couple of days ago at the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, someone noted that uh, that was also happened to be George W. Bush's uh, birthday. 76th birthday, and it was on July 6, 76. Uh, yes, I've known about the Georgia Guidestones for many years, and uh, it calls for a world population of 500 million, and uh, it, it, it has uh, text in all different languages, and no one knows who put that up there, the Georgia Guidestones, who actually commissioned the company to, to put that up there in Georgia, and it was blown up the other day, and they had to take it down. Uh, another symbolic event, I would say. Uh, I'm not trying to get too conspiratorial here, but who knows? So um, today, of course, we've got non-farm payroll in the U.S., the jobs data. I think that's going to be very uh, significant to see where the economy is going. We know, of course, there are signs that the economy is going into a recession, but uh, this number will be closely looked at. It comes out at uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time in the U.S. So it's 8.38 a.m. We've got spot gold at 17.38, down about $2. High has been 47 and the low 35. Uh, spot silver is down 11 cents at 19.10. 
right on the lows here <laughs> actually the high has been 1935 uh, Dow futures down 35 uh, the uh, Nasdaq is down 24 S&P 500 is down 6 FTSE is down 5 uh, to the currencies uh, sterling is down almost two-thirds of a percent at 119.50 so we're seeing the pound get get sold again uh, we're seeing the euro get sold. We are at almost, while well, we are at a, a one handle, uh, the euro is at 1009. So almost down to parity. It's down three quarters of a percent, the euro versus the dollar. Uh, dollar is pretty steady here versus the yen. The yen hasn't really moved uh, after this uh, shooting. Uh, dollar is down slightly at 135.80. Um, the dollar's up half a percent versus the Swiss franc at 97.86. And uh, the dollar's up a quarter of a percent versus the U1 at 670.80. Let's check the ruble. Uh, the ruble, uh, while the dollar's coming off a bit versus the ruble, it's at 62.80. I think we got up to 66 a few days ago. We'll continue with the other currencies now. Uh, we've got the Aussie dollar down almost half a percent at 68.08. We got the dollar up a third of a percent versus the Canadian dollar at 130.12. And uh, the Kiwi dollar is down almost half a percent as well at 61.50. Let's look at the, the general commodities. We got WTI crude trading right at 100. It's down half a percent. Uh, Brent crude is down 0.2% at 103.25. High grade copper is down over 3% at 345.20. And uh, US nat gas is down 2.8% at 609. Let's check the Dutch uh, nat gas contract, which is important for Europe, of course. Yeah, that, that's still. Uh, pretty elevated. It, it closed yesterday. It was down 7%, but it's still above 170, uh, which is more than 10x what it used to be prior to uh, COVID in 2020. What about the UK situation, the political situation in the UK, just <laughs> uh, moving a little bit out of the market? Well, in terms of the economic situation for the UK, the currency, I don't think anything will change. <laughs> Whoever comes in, even if we have eventually a, a general election, nothing's going to change. Everything, all the inflation that we're going to see, all the economic problems are set in stone, in my opinion, barring, of course, uh, some kind of revolution in this country. Uh, None of the political parties, none of the leaders have a grip on things, in my opinion. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, well, we'll finish off with the uh, bond market with the 10-year yield. Uh, that's down just over three basis points at around 2.97. The two-year yield is also down about four basis points, but that's at 3%. So the curve is still inverted. And uh, of course, jobs data, that will be the key for all, all markets uh, this afternoon. So with that, I wish you all a, a, a great uh, weekend. And uh, also, before I go, make sure you uh, hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, think about subscribing as well if you haven't yet. So yeah, next up here, uh, we'll be doing the Mike and Mario show which I'll be publishing tomorrow. And uh, I'm also interviewing um, Jim Lewis from Wall Street Silver. Uh, and I think that's going to be very interesting. I don't think I've interviewed him before, or maybe I have, but it's been a while. And uh, Jim does a great job <laughs> on Twitter with his memes. And of course, uh, on his channel, YouTube channel, Wall Street Silver, which I recommend you subscribe to. And uh, I'll probably pub publish that on Sunday that interview. And uh, yeah, so have a great weekend and uh, take care. Bye.